Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today we are upgrading an iMac with an SSD. Now there are a couple of ways that we can do this already. I've done videos on doing SSD upgrades to iMacs in the past, so if you search my YouTube channel for iMac, you will find them. We're doing this one a little bit differently, where today we are going to be fitting our SSD into the DVD drive bay. So DVD drive on the side, that's coming out and we're gonna put the SSD in there which allows us to have the SSD and the hard drive at the same time. I'll also be showing you how best to configure macOS to make use of both drives nice and easily. So let's get started. Okay, right, so to get started, I've placed the Mac so uh, the top part is facing me. Uh, this gives generally easier access. Now, if you have one of the older iMacs that has the silver bezel around the edge, the disassembly is gonna be a little bit trickier. I suggest you look up some of my other iMac videos to see the best disassembly on those. Um, however, uh, I'll try and give you some guides as we go through. So the first thing you need to do is take off the front glass panel. This is magnetically latched onto it. So um, uh, if you have a um, bezel-less model like this one, um, you can usually just get your fingernails behind the glass around the webcam and just lift up. And if we just get my fingers underneath there, that's just gonna pop off like that. Um, if you have one with a bezel, it's a little bit trickier. Um, you will probably need a suction cap or something similar. Uh, be very careful if you're gonna try and pry it out um, because it's very easy to crack the glass. So once you've pried it up, lift it up by a little ways and then that just slides out like so. Uh, again, if you have one with a bezel, it's going to lift out directly away. This one bends up slightly and then comes out. So let's put our glass panel in a safe place. Now there's a lot of dust in this one. Uh, we're gonna be clearing that out while we're at it as well. So let's just try and keep that under control. Um, now uh, the LCD, it's safe to touch this LCD, although obviously you'll put fingerprints on it. Um, but it is vulnerable, so be very careful with screwdrivers and stuff like that. So the next thing we need to do is take this fella out. So we've got T10 screws um, down both sides, four on each side. So let's get to unscrewing those. Now, because they're a little way into it, it's quite safe on the removal. Uh, if you have an iMac that has, again, the silver bezel around the edge, you're gonna have two sets of screws to take out. You're gonna have screws all the way around the edge, which will allow you to remove the silver front, and then you need to do these. So again, check out the videos, blah, 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 blah. So one trick that I do teach to my students is when you're working on these iMacs, while you have the exposed screen, is to keep one hand fit, um, between the screen and the screwdriver. So that way, if I slip with the screwdriver, I can push away from the iMac. Um, and I can do that in any instance, and that just protects it. And I just dropped a screw somewhere. Uh, that'll show up in a minute. It's all coming out, so we'll see that when it comes out. Right, so now what I'm doing is I've just got the prime tool and I'm just lifting up the backs of the screen just to make sure that everything is free. And now we're just gonna get a hand underneath that screen. There we go. And I'm going to lift it up just a little way. And now let me just rearrange the camera so I can show you guys what happens next. Okay, so now as I lift up the display panel, will have some cables holding on. So I'm gonna bend in and have a look. Okay, this one's quite an easy one. We commonly have a cable coming up here. That one's absent on this particular iMac, so that's fine. We've got the main display cable here, and we've got something over here as well. So now, because there's nothing at the front, it's actually gonna be easier for me to go from the other side of this panel now. So let's just have a look down there. Right, so to get the other side of the panel up, I'm going to lift it up at the front, then I'm going to pull it down slightly and just bring the front up like that. And now I'm going to settle the top of the panel back in the iMac, so now I can hold it just by the front and raise it up. So you can see we've got this cable here now. So how much slack has that got on it? There we go. Right, so that's connecting onto the board there. 
Let's disconnect you. That's free. And now we've got just the, oh, we've got the display cable and a thermal sensor. So here's our thermal sensor. Just gonna pull that out from the board. And then finally, we have the display connector. So this guy has a locking lever and then pulls out. Now, there are a lot of variations on the cables underneath the panel. So just watch very carefully, look at how the connectors work and move carefully. And once you've disconnected everything, we can now just lift the screen away. Job done. Okay, right, I've just turned the iMac around now just to give a better angle for the camera. However, again, I recommend working with the top of the iMac toward you just because it tilts everything in your direction. So now there's two options for mounting our SSD at this stage. Normally, um, I would be mounting the SSD here uh, in the hard drive bay. I would remove the hard drive. Um, and so that would be two screws out, uh, disconnect these two cables, and then you can mount your SSD in this bracket and you will need a two and a half to three and a half inch adapter plate to do that. Again, see my other videos for more details. However, today we're removing the optical drive. So let's take this fella out and see how it all goes together. So I've removed the screws and we're just gonna pull that away and now Disconnect the serial ATA cable from the back. A ah. little bit of a struggle there. And then we have a thermal sensor on top of the drive, which I'm going to remove. Just going to peel that back. Okay, that's stuck down pretty well, so I'm going to use a uh, Stanley blade just to prise that off of the top of the drive. We're going to want to attach this to our... Uh, um, to our SSD somehow. There we go. Okay, now at this point, once you've removed anything that's coming out, um, I recommend taking the whole iMac to uh, um, to outside or in a uh, in the garage or somewhere like that and dusting it all out. You will find a huge amount of dust on these heat sinks uh, around here, um, in the CPU fan down over here. Um, and that's all got to come out. So use this opportunity to dust out the entire iMac. Dust is the number one killer in these things. Uh, it also routinely causes these things to cook their hard drives. So we're going to clean this thing out so we've got a nice clean working space. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. Lovely and clean. Okay, let's put this to one side for a moment while we have a look at our DVD drive setup. Okay, so here's our uh, iMac SuperDrive, and what I've got here is a uh, DVD drive to two and a half inch adapter bay. Now, this is the cheapest one I could find. I wanted to see how bad the cheapest ones would actually be. Um, I mean, all of these ones that I've used historically have been a little bit sketchy, but this one was like a few quid, and I wanted to find out if it was actually any good or not. So let's discover this together. Um, so let's put that to one side a sec. The SSD I'm fitting is a uh, Crucial MX300. Uh, this is the 525 version. Um, so normally if you're doing a two drive combo like this, um, the 275 is gonna be absolutely fine. Um, however, uh, my client specifically requested a 500, so that's fine. So let's open that up and get this guy out. So there's our SSD. And here is our adapter, which comes with a nice little screwdriver there. It's kind of funky. So you can leave this, if you're putting this in a laptop, you can leave the screwdriver there just so you can change drives out without needing a toolkit maybe. Cool, so you'll notice that um, uh, the, optical, uh, the optical drive serial ATA connector is actually shorter than a standard one. Uh, the power connector is, uh, is shorter. So um, uh, that's the thing you've got to watch out for. Uh, thankfully, these adapters have accounted for that. Um, my heart actually stopped for a moment when I saw the connector on the old DVD drive where I suddenly thought, uh oh, uh, however, we're fine. There's no problem at all. So uh, this one will fit in like so. And 
and it will sit in the drive like that, so it's completely flush. Now it's worth noting that this is a 9.3 millimeter um, uh, bay adapter and a 9.3 millimeter drive. If you're fitting this to a ultra slim laptop like a MacBook Pro um, or some other high-end laptops, you may find that you have a seven millimeter optical drive, which means you will need a super low profile one of these. I'm not sure the exact measurements, but just be aware of that. Um, however, the iMac has got the big chunky 9.3 mil drive in it. So let's stick a couple of screws in this. I'm not gonna use this epoxy little screwdriver, I'm gonna use a proper one. We don't really need all four screws holding this in, but it's in all probability never gonna be removed from the computer again, so overkill is underrated. And this screwdriver is slightly too small, so I'm gonna get a slightly bigger one. Use the correct size screwdrivers, it makes everything easier. There we go. Right, so there's our SSD mounted up in a DVD drive shaped device. So now we can remove the super drive from the IMAX optical drive cage and put this fella in it instead. So what have we got for those? We're back on the T8s for these. So switch over to T8. The problem with the iMac is that all of its screws and uh, brackets and everything are all proprietary, which makes retrofitting parts a little bit tricky. You'll actually see in some of my other videos that sometimes with adapter plates you have to re-tap the holes and things like that, but I think we'll be okay for this instance. Right, so that's the four screws removed from the sides, and I think this will just come out now. Yep, so we've got this tape along the top here that's just a dust guard. So um, I'm going to peel that off from the drive. There we go. So there's the standard slot load super drive from the iMac. It's nothing particularly fancy. This is just a standard slot load DVD burner. Um, so most of these, oh, that's a Sony OptiArc. That's interesting. They did actually start using decent ones. For a very long time, Apple were using um, um, uh, Mishita or Michita or something like that, um, which are notoriously naff. They're also very noisy, which gives the MacBook Pro its charismatic noise when you first turn it on. Anyway, so let's now mount this one in here. So uh, I'm going to just sort of offer that up. And that's just dropped straight in there like so. And it's lining up with the back, so that looks good. So what we'll do is we'll just put a couple of locating screws in that to hold it in place. And then we'll try and stick that, um, uh, we'll try and stick that foil down just for neatness. Since there's no actual opening at the front of our bay adapter, we don't need to worry about dust getting in or anything like that. But it, it would be nice if we can leave a really, a really good factory looking finish on this thing. I can find the holes. Now on a sec, does this thing even have holes in the side? Oh, it does, but those look, those holes look pretty awful. Uh, we're gonna need to pilot those. So sometimes when you buy a plastic adapter like this, the holes are gonna be pretty crap. So you would do well just to line your screws up. In fact, I think I'm actually gonna have to tap out those holes. That's pretty shocking. Uh, I don't even have a tap for that. Okay, let's find a small screwdriver and at least make, make an indentation there. So I'm just gonna force the screwdriver in and just gouge that hole slightly. There we go. So there's a normal hole. There's one I've just gouged. So that screw should actually pick up and tap in now. Oh, uh, there we go. This one seems to be going in much easier. It's not biting as much as I would like it to, but it's holding it in place. And bearing in mind, of course, this thing is, uh, it's not structural. It's not like it's gonna fall out. There we go. That is in. So I wonder if I could, yeah, no, we'll leave that one be. Um, we're missing the screw in the bottom right, but uh, I can live with that. Everything else there is plumbed into position. So there is our DVD drive rig set up. Let's get the iMac back in frame. Right, so here's our iMac back on the bench. So now we'll position the drive back in place. 
And because it's still in the original iMac cage, this is just gonna drop straight in now. We have adapted it. So we need some T8s to screw that back in. And while I'm doing this, I suppose it's worth discussing performance. Now, first of all, these iMacs are limited, I believe all of them are limited to serial 882. So that's gonna hobble performance from your SSD anyway. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, there's no performance penalty for having your SSD mounted on the DVD drive line like this. The SATA connector going to it is exactly the same as the one going to the hard drive. So this isn't gonna hobble performance at all. But again, bearing in mind that most of the iMacs are serial ATA2, which means you're gonna to top out at about 240 megabytes per second. But it's those 4K ops, which will be at around 20 megs per second with an SSD, that's what you want. Okay, let's get him hooked up. I should have plugged this guy in before I screwed it all into place. But I think I can wrangle that in there with a bit of jiggery pokery. And he's connected. Right, now we need to put our thermal sensor somewhere. Now this guy is not critical. As long as this thermal sensor is connected to the logic board, it doesn't really matter, it'll be fine. However, the, this thermal sensor will dictate how fast this fan down here is gonna spin. So um, the SSD doesn't produce a whole load of heat, but it would be nice just to have something there. So um, has that got any sticky on it? It's, it's got a little bit, but what I might do is I'm just gonna put the tiniest, tiniest drop of super glue on the back of that. So this is just some ordinary CS glue I've got here and I'm literally just gonna dab that Uh, well, so there's actually some there. There we go. Tiniest little dab. And we'll just put that on the corner there. And the residue from the previous sticky down there will just hold that in place until the glue sets. So because we just put a tiny little dab there, that's still gonna just ping off if we get a fingernail under it, but it means it's not gonna fall off while the laptop is, well, there, yeah, while the iMac is running. So that's all hunky-dory. Uh, right, I think we are ready to close up on this. Everything is in place. Uh, there we go. Right. Um, what are we going to do with you? i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly put a little bit of uh, captain tape over that. Once the glue sets, it'll hold itself down. But because CS glue wants a couple of hours, that's going to... Uh, be a little bit annoying for me. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of Captain tape, which is heat resistant tape, and just use that to hold it down. There we go. So this is basically um, heat proof sellotape. So um, it behaves just like sellotape, except it won't come unstuck in the heat of the computer running. So that's just gonna hold him in place and then the CS glue will set on that anyway. And that now just means that if our SSD starts kicking out a lot of heat because it's getting thrashed, it means this fan is gonna spool up and just deliver some more airflow up this direction for us. There we go. Um, good, right, okay, let's close up. So let's go to the wide angle shot again. Right, so now we're gonna reassemble this in the reverse order that we took it apart. So we're gonna start off by bringing our LCD panel back into the shot. So I'm gonna carefully orientate this the right way around. Now, because all of, our, uh, all of our cables came off from the lower half of the screen, I'm gonna put the top half of the screen in position, and we're gonna very gently lower that down. So um, I, did, I took this out, off in the order of backlight, thermal sensor, then display connector because that was the cable length for me. So we're gonna go display connector. There we go. And then I've just made sure that the locking lever is over that connector as well. Now we're gonna lower down and plug in the thermal sensor. Probably not gonna be able to give you guys a very good view of this because these connectors are a pain in the backside. And I'm doing this left-handed. There we go. Thermal sensor in. 
And then finally, I'm just gonna plug in my backlight cable that was over on my right hand side. There we go. So all of my connectors are in. I'm just looking under the display, making sure there's no other cables flapping in the breeze, which there are not. And now we need to pick up the top of the screen and then tuck the bottom of the screen into the iMac frame and then just drop that in like that. And that's the screen in position. So now we can drill all of its screws back in. Okay, and like with before, I'm going to use my I'm going to use my offhand just to cover the screen, just so if I slip with the screwdriver, again I can immediately just break off away from the iMac. Everyone slips with a screwdriver now and then. The trick is is just to make sure that you do it, that you slip away in a controlled manner. Don't panic too much if you've put a load of fingerprints all over your screen. We're going to clean that up in just a sec before we put the glass back on anyway. And also when you're working on um, a large device or a small device for that matter, don't be afraid to turn it around. You know, like at the moment, I'm, uh, I'm now working cat handed to keep my offhand covering the screen. Um, I'm going to keep mine in the same orientation for the sake of the video, but you know, you can turn the iMac around so you're working at a, an easier angle for yourself. A lot of my students have a nasty habit of they place it down on the desk and they'll work around it and they'll put their arms at awkward angles because they don't think to just, you know, turn it around. There we go. So that's our display screws in. So now we're going to give this a quick clean. Now I've been okay with my fingerprints, so I don't need to do any major work to this. If you've made a real mess of your screen, then just use a soft cloth, a microfiber cloth is best, and some glass cleaner. So just ordinary windoline, Tesco window and glass, whatever you want. Um, just give that a quick spritz and just wipe it down to a nice shine again. I'm just gonna go around the edges and take off the couple of marks that I put on this one. Don't panic about dust right now. We'll worry about that in a moment because uh, dust will be settling all the time. So we clear the dust at the very last second. So um, this iMac was filthy when I started working on it. So I'm gonna deliberately place the glass upside down for a sec. So that puts the glass on a nice flat surface, which means I can clean the back side of it. So glass cleaner. Okay, so pro tip when you're cleaning up your glass panels, while I'm on the back of the panel, I'm going horizontal left to right. And then what I'm gonna do is when I turn the panel over, I will go up and down. So that makes a crisscross pattern. So if I see a streak on the glass, I'll know which side of the glass the streak is on. Very handy when you're doing Windows or iMacs or anything. Okay, so that seems good enough for me. So let's turn it over and settle this glass on properly. And so we're going to set those metal tabs into the bottom of the iMac body. Make sure they're all in first. And then we're just gonna drop that down. Again, don't panic about dust right now. Firstly, we would just wanna get the glass panel cleaned up so we can actually see the dust. And then we'll actually go for the uh, anti-dust issues. It's not perfect underneath, but my cloths need cleaning, so I'm satisfied with that. Bearing in mind that, you know, when you start it up, the, the brightness of the screen will overcome most minor stuff anyway. Okay, right, and let's do a dust check. We've got a little bit of dust under the glass, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a completely dry cloth that I haven't used yet. And this is gonna be our dust grabber. And once again, I'm gonna stick my nails under the glass and just lift that back up. And we're just gonna go, firstly, we're going to wipe off the back of the glass. And now we're gonna go wipe down. Now being quick is the key here. 
not hasteful, just get on with it. Because the longer the glass is off the panel, the more dust will settle. And back on again. Come on, get in there. There we go. There we go, that's good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. That is minimal dust. All right, so we've set up our iMac. I'm now gonna hold down Option on the white screen to get a boot menu. So I'm holding down my Option or Alt key if you're using a Windows keyboard. Now, because I still have the old hard drive in this iMac, we can still boot from the old hard drive. And in addition to that, we still have the recovery partition on the old hard drive. So if I wanted to, uh, I can immediately do a reinstall or recovery onto the SSD from the old hard drive, which is what I'm gonna to demonstrate today. The other option, or if you do not have your old hard drive fitted, is that you need to have a MacOS install flash drive at the ready. So um, I'm not gonna go through how to create one of these right now. Uh, do a Google search on making a High Sierra fl uh, flash drive and you'll find loads of guides on how to make one of these. It's very straightforward to do. I recommend you have this ready before you start working on your Mac, which I probably should have mentioned earlier on, but we'll put that in the video description. However, in this instance, I'm gonna boot from my recovery partition, and this means that we can actually get this thing reconfigured without a flash drive. So let's boot into that. Okay, so once you've booted up from either your flash drive or your recovery partition, you'll see the Mac OS Utilities menu like this. Um, so the first thing we need to do is format our SSD. So we're gonna head into Disk Utility, hit Continue there. Um, and what I'm gonna do to make this bit a bit easier to show, we're just gonna change the view to Show All Devices. Now with Mac OS, you have Drives, and then Drives contain Volumes. So Macintosh HD is a volume on the Seagate hard drive that is inside the computer. That is our physical drive. This is a software volume on that drive. You can have multiple volumes on a single drive. Now again, this is similar to partitions. The two words are often used interchangeably. They're not quite the same thing. However, um, you can, uh, you know, um, all, uh, all partitions are volumes, not all, parti not all volumes are partitions, etc., etc. Right, so here is our crucial SSD. As you can see, it's uninitialized. So if what we're going to do now is hit Erase, and we're going to call this uh, MacOS, and we're going to give it the standard MacOS format. So MacOS Extended Journaled and GUID Partition Map. Bam. Right, and that is done. So now, as you can see, we have a MacOS volume on our Crucial SSD. So this thing is ready to be installed on now. So let's close Disk Utility and hit Reinstall MacOS. All right, welcome to High Sierra. Continue. Wah. Okay, uh, we need to make sure this thing is connected to the internet. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna hit the um, uh, the wireless icon in the top right of the screen that you can't see because it's off camera and connect it to my wireless network. Older versions of MacOS are less fussy about this, but more or less from Sierra onwards, um, you have to have an internet connection to do this install. Thankfully, because you're installing on a Mac, that's not difficult to do. Just waiting for that to connect. Okay, that's good. All right. It's also worth noting that if you've been installing on a, uh, a laptop, on a MacBook, you may have to set the clock for this to work as well. Um, so you may have to go into the terminal by hitting the utilities menu in the top left of the screen, going to terminal and setting the clock from the terminal. Again, do a Google search on how to do that. Um, I'm not going to cover that in this video. Right, reinstall MacOS. Continue. All right, there we go, we're getting somewhere now. So agree, we agree. So as you can see, we now have multiple choices for where to install MacOS. So uh, if we install on Macintosh HD, that's our hard drive, that's gonna overwrite our previous install of MacOS. We're not gonna touch this for now. I'll tell you how best to utilize this later. 
we're going to install onto MacOS, which is the new SSD volume that we created. Okay, right, now we're past the initial loading bar for MacOS. We're at the first run. So let's just quickly whiz through this first run setup. So we're in the United Kingdom with British keyboards. Um, oops. And uh, yeah, I'm going to connect it to Wi Fi so we can download updates. Okay, right. Now, Although we are going to transfer information from the old one, I advise not doing it at this point. When you've just installed MacOS, my advice is to say don't transfer any information now and make a generic user account. Now the reason why I do this is that if migration fails, you'll be left with a Mac, with a Mac that doesn't want to start properly because there's no user account on it. So I always recommend going through this user creation I'm making just a generic user account and I'm just going to give that the password Apple just so we can get it to the desktop and then once there is a generic user account created then we can focus on data migration so let's get through there all right and yeah we're going to do express setup because I'm going to create a new user account later anyway Doo -doo -doo. All right, so I'm being whinged at about having a non-Apple keyboard, so I'm just going to quickly do that. Okay, right, we can switch to Capture now. So let's just do some switching around. Right. So now you're on the desktop. We've created our generic user account. Now at this point, if you want to import your user data from your old hard drive, head on over to Utilities and run the migration system. And then you can import your data from your hard drive that's still built into your Mac. You can connect your old hard drive via USB, or you can import from your time machine backup if you have one. And that will help you get all of your data across. However, my client has too much data on their old hard drive to import across. So they're going to do that at their own leisure when they've cleared it out and they can import some of their stuff, but not all of it. However, what I will do at this point is show you how to configure the Mac to make best use of the SSD. So uh, let's open up a finder window. So I'm going to go over to Macintosh HD. And so here we can see our hard drive with all the previous stuff on it. Now, what I would advise doing at this point is making a new folder here and calling it your username. So uh, let's just authorize, so Apple. And I'm going to call this my name just for argument's sake. Oh, hang on a sec, rename, my name. There we go. So we're going to pretend that this is our user account that's going to have all of our user data in that won't fit on our SSD. So what I want to do now is make, I want to make symbolic links. So I'm going to open another finder window. So we're going to go file new. And we're going to head over to our home account. So uh, we're going to go go home. And actually, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to press um, Command Up, and I'm going to drag User to the Favorites, so I actually have a shortcut to my home folder now, because it's really annoying that that's not there by default. So now, things like Documents, we're going to want to leave those on the SSD, because they don't take up any space. However, Movies, this is one of the big ones. This is something that we really want to be storing on our hard drive and not on our SSD. So, in order to redirect our Movies folder, to our hard drive, first thing I'm going to make a new movies folder over here. So I'm going to make a new one and call it movies. And I'm going to make a symbolic link to it. So I'm going to make an alias. I'm just going to call that movies alias for now. Now what I want to do is put movies alias in here. However, I can't do that by default because you're not allowed to delete the folders in your home folder. So what we're going to do is do that from the terminal. So we're going to hit go, utilities, and open terminal. Now by default terminal is going to open in your home folder so we've got iMac user so I'm going to do ls and as you can see there are home folders. Now I'm going to do rm movies so dot forward slash movies so that means remove current folder movies. Okay I think I need RM recursive. 
and we need to sudo that because it's an admin prompt. There we go. So, sudo RMR movies, and this should give me permission now. Now pull. There we go. So now if I go back to my home folder, our movies folder has been deleted. So now movies has been deleted, I can put my alias over there. And I can rename that to movies. So now when we open up any app that wants to use movie, so if we use iMovie or if we open up anything that's going to want to use said movies, um, we will now find that it automatically redirects to from here over to here. So we can remove that as well. It's no longer needed. So now all of my movies are automatically being stored on the hard drive. And I can rinse and repeat this for any of these folders that I want. So uh, let me see, movies and music are the two common ones that you want to do because movies and music, music are the big space eaters. Um, pictures is also a big space eater. However, I would recommend keeping the pictures on your SSD if you can, because it will drastically improve the performance of the Photos app and anything else that is reading from Photos. Uh, having your pictures on your SSD is an enormous performance advantage, whereas um, if you have the space for it, that is. So that is how we redirect our folders. So I think that pretty much covers all of our bases now. So we have demonstrated how to install our SSD, we've demonstrated how to install MacOS on it, and we've demonstrated how to redirect some of your home folders to your old hard drive in order to preserve the space on your SSD. Now finally, as aforementioned, we still have all of our old stuff on the old hard drive. We've got a, an entire MacOS installation there. What I would advise doing is trying to clear that all off and then format your old hard drive so you have a nice clean slate to work with. So to format the hard drive, we're going to need to go over to Utilities again and we're going to open Disk Utility. And then we can select Macintosh HD and we can click Erase. And then you can flatten your hard drive and then start using it to store your new data. And there, that way, we now have an iMac with a 500 gigabyte SSD and a terabyte hard drive in it at the same time. So I think that covers everything. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. And I will see you all next time. Goodbye for now.